Now, now that we define what radioactivity is and what radioactive decay is, let's actually examine one particular type of radioactive decay. So one type of radioactive decay in which an unstable nucleus basically disintegrates or breaks down into a more stable nucleus and in the process releases an alpha particle, well this type of radioactive decay is commonly known as simply alpha decay. Now before we examine the general form of the equation that describes radioactive radioactive decay known as alpha decay, let's actually define what an alpha particle is. So an alpha particle is given by the Greek letter alpha. Now basically, the unstable nucleus of our atom disintegrates and in the process, it basically releases a bundle of four nucleons. And these four nucleons are basically held together by strong and weak nuclear forces. Now, now two of these nucleons are protons and two of these nucleons are neutrons. So in a way, since a helium nucleus also consists of two protons and two neutrons bonded together via strong and weak nuclear forces, we commonly refer to the alpha particle as a helium atom. Now, the only difference is a helium atom in its neutral state contains two electrons, which basically form an envelope or an electron density around the nucleus of that helium atom. However, an alpha particle doesn't actually contain any electrons. It doesn't have any electron clouds around that bundle of four nucleons. And so that means because an alpha particle does not have any electrons but has two protons, that means the charge on our alpha particle is given by positive 2e, where e is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So now that we define what an alpha particle is, let's actually discuss the equation that describes how radioactive alpha decay takes place. So this is the equation that basically gives us the general form of alpha decay, where capital X is basically our nucleus that is unstable, that disintegrates or breaks down, and we commonly call that the parent nucleus. This is our less stable atom. Now because of the instability of this atom, it basically releases four nucleons in a bundle we call the alpha particle. So we can represent this using alpha alpha or using the letters HE which stand for helium. Now the positive 2 simply means this carries a charge of positive 2. Now X prime is simply our more stable nucleus that is formed and this usually is given by the daughter nucleus. So there should be a T. So this is called our daughter nucleus. So the parent nucleus, because of its instability, breaks down into a alpha particle and our daughter nucleus. Now notice this capital A represents the atomic mass. That's the sum of the protons and the neutrons. So A gives us the number of nucleons in the nucleus of our atom X, where Z designates the atomic mass number. So this gives us the number of protons. Now when alpha decay takes place, it produces a new element given by X prime that loses a total of four nucleons. So we subtract A minus four. And then our Z loses two protons. So that means the atomic number of X prime is Z minus two. Now because our alpha carries four nucleons, two protons, and two neutrons, this is four and this is two. 
So, notice that in alpha decay, an unstable nucleus emits a bundle consisting of two protons and two neutrons, thereby forming a completely new element we call the daughter nucleus. And this process by which we transform or convert one element into a different element is known as transmutation. So alpha decay is one type of transmutation. Now to gain more insight into how alpha decay takes place and why it actually takes place, let's look at the following example. So as one particular example, let's consider the unstable radium-226 atom. So this is the nucleus of our radium-226. The 226 simply gives us the total number of nucleons. So we have 226 nucleons found inside this nucleus, where the brown are the neutrons and the red are our protons. Now this blue region is the electron density that is created as a result of all these electrons found around the atom. Now if this atom is in its neutral state, that means since we have 88 protons, we have 88 electrons orbiting our nucleus. And this is shown in this electron cloud shown in blue. So radium is given by Ra. So we have our atomic mass 226 and our atomic number 88. Now, what exactly causes our radium atom to actually break down and disintegrate into an alpha particle and some other atom? Well, inside this nucleus of our radium atom, the large number of protons create a very large electric repulsion force. So basically, be, because we have so many protons bundled in a very concentrated region, that greatly increases the electrostatic repulsion forces and that basically tends to pull our protons apart to force our protons to move in all different directions. Now since the nucleus is large and the strong nuclear forces that basically hold our entire nucleus together are short range because of the large size of the nucleus the strong nuclear forces aren't very strong in the sense that they can't actually overcome the electrostatic repulsion forces of our protons. So that basically means that in order to increase the stability of the nucleus, the nucleus actually has to break down and form a different atom. And so radium readily undergoes alpha decay to produce an alpha particle as well as radon. Now now, radon is a more stable daughter nucleus. It has 86 protons because two protons went into our alpha particle and 222 is our atomic mass because we have minus four nucleons. So this is our alpha particle which basically is released from the nucleus of our radium atom. So it has a charge of positive two, it has four nucleons, and two protons. Now, we can also use the conservation of energy to actually write the equation for what is taking place. So let's make the assumption that initially, before this actually took place, our atom, the radium atom, was stationary. So before this actually took place, before our alpha decay took place, the only energy that we have is the energy as a result of the rest mass energy energy. So that is given by MPC squared, where MP is the mass of our parent nucleus. In this particular case, it's the mass of our radium atom. Now, following our radioactive decay, following the alpha decay, we have two particles form. So essentially we have the new nucleus that is given by the mass D. So the, uh, the D corresponds to the daughter nucleus. So once again, the rest mass of the daughter nucleus plus the rest mass of our alpha particle plus Q 
Now, Q in this case is known as the disintegration energy. It's basically the total energy that was released as a result of this alpha decay. Now, another way of thinking of our disintegration energy as simply that being the total kinetic energy of our two particles after this took place. So after they disintegrated, the conservation of momentum tells us that if this moves with the velocity v1 in this direction, this will move with the velocity v2 in this general direction. So that means Q can also represent the kinetic energy of these two particles after our essentially disintegration took place. So once again, Q is known as the disintegration energy and we can use this equation to solve for our Q. Now Q is also known as the Q value and in the next lecture we're going to look at an example that deals with the disintegration energy Q.